God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship online at St. Andrews, where we seek God and seek to abide with God right where we are. As you settle into your worship space, I invite you to light a candle claiming that Christ's light is with you. I also invite you to find your Bible, and if you want to get ready, you can open it to 1 Samuel chapter 3 today. That is what we will be working with. Today during the service, we will also be installing new and returning trustees, and you are a part of that even where you are. So please do offer your hearts and prayers and support to them. The bulletin announcements are on the website for you, and I want to remind you that the mission spotlight this month is um, some kind of pasta. What kind of pasta is that? Canned pasta, because we don't do glass. Canned pasta and instant hot cereal. And you're welcome to drop those by the church. If you have things for the free little pantry, you can put them in there at any point when you are around the church. There are other announcements for you, but now would you pause with me. Let us calm our hearts and minds and lift them up to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, in the midst of all that's going on in the world, in the midst of this morning, we come. And we seek to turn to you, acknowledging that we need your help. We need your help, O oh Lord, to push away the distractions. We need your help, O oh Lord, to be drawn in when we're not surrounded by those who are worshiping as well. We need your help, O oh Lord, that indeed you would open our hearts and our minds and our souls right now. Amen. hearts, let us come to God with our prayers of confession. Join me in this prayer found in the bulletin. God of all that is good, we confess that we make quick judgments of what is good and what is not. Too often we are wrong. Forgive us. Soften our hard hearts and help us see goodness in unexpected places. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners and so far from God, 
Christ came for us and died for us, rose in power, and now Christ is praying for us. People of God, know that in Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And be at peace. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Take a moment to pause in this peace and find a way sometime today to pass this peace of Christ on again and again. Amen. Today I would ask you that you join me in this prayer of illumination as we begin to gather around God's word. Let us pray. We pray, O God, that you will open the door of our hearts to hear you within our hearts. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is from 1 Samuel chapter 3. Beginning in verse 1, this is in the Old Testament, it's one of the books of the prophets. And actually it's a history book, but it has a prophet in it. And I invite you to open your Bible and read along. And I actually invite you to leave your Bible open as we will read some more later in the service. So let us listen to God's word that is for us in this day. 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. And the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord again called, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak. For your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today I have a few different things in thinking about how we use our voice and how we hear sound. And and I have these cups that usually we use for coffee, right? I'm sure some of you out there have coffee. But when I was young, I remember we'd have, I don't know if you can see, there's actually a string between these. We would have cups with a string, and one person would hold it way across the room, pretend with me, and the other person would speak, and they would try and hear it. And you know what? I have to admit, I am not super good at science. 
But it always seemed like I listened so much harder when I was using these in some kind of game or we were trying to hear across the room. And I loved that. Recently, what I found with Riley, I, some of these were in his stocking. I have no idea what you call them, but they, they make fun noises when you move them. And you can also just talk through them and listen through them sort of in the same way. They also are really fun in the bath. You can find things for yourself at, how, at your house that make different noises, but the classic, of course, is a kazoo. Isn't it great? You can have no musical talent and have a lot of fun with a kazoo. Let's see, what, what song should I try? Oh, okay. They don't have any ideas. Let's go with... Oh, Jesus loves me. Perfect. So here's just a couple ways. Find some more. Some more ways to play with sound and communicating and also listening in different ways. And it's a lot of fun to play with those things. And in the fun times and in all the other times, we have to remember is that who we listen to and how we listen, it's really important. So be careful not to put anyone else's voice, no matter how fun it might be or intriguing, in place of God's voice. That is what we need to tune our hearts and minds and souls to really hear. So it's most important, like we heard from Samuel who learned how to listen to God, to hear God. And somehow, God always helps us know if it really is God's voice. Listen. And have fun in how you think of all the ways God gave us to express and share language and sound. We also have to find a way to listen for God. Let us pray. Holy God, it is amazing to think that you could speak to us. But help us, O oh Lord, to learn to listen so well to you in our hearts, to you in your spirit that we would know your voice and put it above all other voices, all other noise in this world. Amen. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. I've heard tender whisper of love in dead of night you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, to you are, to you are, and I'm loved by you.
Our gospel lesson is from John chapter 1, beginning in verse 43. I invite you to turn to the gospel, but I also invite you to put something in your Bible there at 1 Samuel. We're going to come back to it. So 1 John 1, verse 43 to 51. This is God's word for us in this day. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once I saw an episode of Survivor, a show that amazingly is still on, with a challenge about listening and following. So they paired people up and One person was put on a platform, and the other person was put way across this huge dirt field and blindfolded. And between them, there were obstacles and fences and things you had to go around. A straight line was not an option. So that one who was on the platform was supposed to call to the other and lead them as they followed their voice across this dirt field full of stuff. But of course, they weren't doing it alone. There were 10 other voices and 10 other people all trying to get a cross. Of course, it was chaotic. And people were screaming at those on the other side, which made them harder to hear. And the mix of voices caused confusion as everyone tried to call directions at once. What most startled me is, The one who was supposed to call to the other who at one point just sort of seemed like they gave up and said, there's nothing I can do for you, as they were there wandering in the field. But some of them made it across easily if that voice was calm and clear and persistent. Some came with a few scrapes and some ended up going in circles, but eventually everyone got to the other side. It was a good challenge. And it points us to the truth that who we listen to and who we follow is not just important. It's a part of who we are and how we survive. In our first scripture today, we find Samuel. He's a boy, which means he must be under 12 And he's living in the temple as his mother promised God when she begged for and prayed for a child. I love this story. I love imagining a child at night waking up and running down the hall as they hear a voice. And yet here, that voice is not coming from the one Eli is running to. It's not coming from Eli, that priest who is near, who seems to be charged with Samuel's care. The scene plays a few times before Eli realizes that it's something else going on. This isn't just one of those getting out of bed tactics. 
And it also reminds us that the voice of God, it was rare in those days. Even in the temples and here, we find God speaking to this young boy. So Eli, he sends Samuel back and teaches him what to do. To listen again for the voice and then he gives him the words to say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Just as we did today, this is often where we stop reading. And as Diane Roth writes about this passage, she, she says, I used to think that the end of Samuel's story was when he learns to listen to God. I wasn't curious at all about what God had to say. This isn't exactly my experience, but I relate to it. Because I've often read this passage in teaching or preparing a sermon, and then I go and say, well, what is it? What does God say? Eager to hear of how God is ready to lead Samuel and offer encouraging words and a message to match that brave boy's words that say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. But as I read on for those answers, looking for that wonderful message, I quickly pull back to verse 10 not at all finding what I expect. Yet today, let us listen to what God says to Samuel. This too is God's word that is for us in these days. If you have your Bible open, we are going to continue reading 1 Samuel chapter 3 in verse 11 to 18. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew. Because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. God speaks. It is rare in those days, but God speaks, and the word is difficult. The Old Testament scholar Richard Boyce speaks to these later voices and he says, as you keep these verses in the reading, you have a powerful story regarding the courage required to listen and to speak. Eli's sons have been using their status as priests to satisfy their own desires, consuming the precious fat of the sacrifices and lying with the vulnerable women who, like Samuel's mother Hannah, had come to worship the Lord at the tent of meeting. These are heinous sins, but who will speak truth to power? 
The voice comes from God through the voice of a child. When we say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, are we listening well enough to hear something difficult, something that makes us shake, something that judges in a way we wouldn't? What a message for Samuel, who's like a son to Eli, to deliver to him. Of course, he laid awake through the night, worried about giving this message to the one he cares about. And what a crushing message for Eli to receive. Yet he asked Samuel to tell him, and he hears this difficult word. And then we see Eli respond rightly. After his own sin is revealed, for he allowed it to happen, He stayed silent too long, yet now he says, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Sometimes the truth is difficult. Yet like Samuel, we need to learn to listen. We have to sort out all those other voices that crowd our ears to be quiet. And wait in silence. I consider myself a beginner in the practice of seeking to listen to God. Yet I will I will share with you what how I try and practice this, that it might offer you a place to start as well. It seems best in the listening to start with silence. And I often find my heart being searched. Where have I put God? What is in God's place? Are there ways I've pushed God out or replaced God or or put in the things that I want? And then again, to come back to that silence and listening, finding a place where the other voices finally fade away. Sometimes a light breeze helps. Just wash them out of your mind. Now, I've never heard a direct message like Samuel, but sometimes there in that silence, that's where I find the Spirit nudging me. Sometimes something simple, nudging me towards someone that needs a call or to prayers that I've let rest on my heart without lifting them up, but sometimes to a new possibility or a new thought that just might fit in God's dreams. And then this is where more of the work begins as Scripture is searched. Is this what I want? Is this voice coming from within me, or does it go with God's word? Is it moving towards Christ or away? And then finally, how can I bring this into the communion of God's people? For we discern together to see if God will bring movement to a new possibility or a new thought. Listening takes practice and patience. Listening takes knowing the other voices and being able to turn away from them and to God. As we listen, we are also more ready to follow Christ. Maybe even finding, as Nathaniel did, that good things come from unexpected places. So people of God in these days, in these difficult days, we need to, each one of us, to stop and reflect what are the voices we are listening to? What authors or commentators or news anchors or preachers or, yes, even politicians, what voices are in our head? Who are we following? 
who or what has subtly or slowly pushed God back and tried to put other paths and other beliefs and other ways in the place of God's ways or even tried to disguise them as God's ways. We are not perfect, not a single one of us. We all wander and listen to what we want and what we like. And sometimes God's word may come and be difficult. But we too can come back and say, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Let us seek to search our hearts and to listen, to find, to search for God's voice amidst the chaos and the clamor. Because we need it. Let's pray. Oh Lord, help us. Teach us to listen for your voice. To listen to your voice, to find it. And, oh God, silence in us any voices that seek to take your place or that lead us away. Show us again your way that is good in the midst of the chaos around us. Indeed, let us be those who say, with open hearts, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen.
we are called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. It is our common calling to be disciples and servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. And within the community of the church, some are called to a particular service, and you have been called and elected by this congregation to be a trustee over the ministry resources and property that God has given to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. Today we celebrate that you say yes to this call, and we do surround you with all of our prayers as we install you in this ministry. And so to active service of the trustees in Christ Church, here at St. Andrews, we now install Annette Chevalier, I'm going to stand up, Jim Riley, Lee Samuelson, and Tom Schott. In answering these questions, you declare your faith and your commitment to this ministry. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior? Acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you? Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? Will you be a faithful trustee serving Christ in St. Andrews by giving your devoted attention to the business and property of this congregation, encouraging generosity, and in all that you do, working to further our witness to Christ in the world? Will you? While the congregation is worshiping where they are, Indeed, we now surround you with our hearts and our prayers. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for all that you have given us here at St. Andrews. We thank you, O Lord, for those you have called to care for, to watch over. All of those things that we have, especially this place, that does mean so much to us. We pray that this work will be a ministry where Annette and Jim and Lee and Tom grow in Christ and in faith. We ask that you bless their work, that you bless their work to be good for your kingdom in this place. We thank you, O oh Lord, for each one of them and for their willingness to serve you. Hear all of our prayers. We ask that your spirit surround them and go before them. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Annette and Tom and Lee and Jim, you are now installed as trustees of St. Andrews to care for all that God has given us. And as a token of your ministry in this place and to remind you that you're serving God's people here at St. Andrews, even if we're not all present in person, we have a print for you of the church that was drawn years ago by J. Mack for you to take with you. So please take one as you go out there in the envelopes. That way I don't touch them, right? We do hope, though, that God will guide you in this ministry, that the Spirit will increase your faith, and that Christ will lead you in all things. And so now, together as God's people, let us affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed, followed by a verse of, Here I am, Lord. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. As we go into our time of offering today, we want to remind you that you may send your check in to the church office or you may give online or on our giving tab. Please join me in our prayer of dedication. Lord Jesus Christ, receive our gifts and the offering of ourselves so that this world may see and hear you more clearly. Amen.
Let us lift up our hearts and our prayers to God. God of all that is good, we come to you today seeking your wisdom, seeking your understanding of truth and what is good. You know the chaos of this world. You know how easy it is to follow what seems true, yet is not. Today we pray for this world and for our nation. We pray for the transition of leaders. We pray for the inaugura inauguration in this next week. We pray for safety. We pray for peace. Even while images that destroy peace keep entering our minds. Yet we do pray for peace on earth and good will for all. We pray for our leaders to have wisdom and to work together. In the midst of all of this, for us, may you be the one who leads us. We continue to pray for the pandemic May all of us continue to turn to you for our hope and to consider how we should be your disciples now, how we are to follow Christ now. We pray for those who have tested positive. Hear our prayers for Bob and Julie. Be near them, O oh Lord. And help them as they personally face this disease. Uphold them and their health, we pray. We pray for Taryn as she recovers from surgery. And Lord, we ask that you would carry away the pain. We pray for Natalie as she continues to journey on this road of recovery. We thank you, O oh Lord for even small steps. We pray, O oh God, for all who grieve. There are too many, yet you know them all. We lift up the Butler and the Cochran families as they grieve the loss of Harry. We ask that you surround Lois and Sean and Derek with your love. We pray, O oh Lord, for the Rahat family. O oh Lord, as they grieve losing Diamond so quickly, as a bullet has taken her life, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would surround them with a peace that passes all understanding and give them the space they need to cry out. Hear their cries, O oh God. Gracious God, we also give you thanks for the moments to celebrate. Today we give thanks for the marriage of Perry's niece and ask your blessing on this new couple as they come together in the midst of this time that has so much separation. O oh Lord, as we offer you our prayers, above all, we pray that through your Spirit, you would let us listen to you. Let us follow you through all the unrest, through all the rhetoric, through all the uncertainties. Let us see where we have wandered away and bring us back to your voice, to your truth, to your hope and your love and remembering. Remembering in every face that crosses our path that it is not just for us, but for all. Holy God, we join our hearts and our prayers with the words that are always right because they're the words that Jesus gave to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I spoke the word you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you bring your life in me. You have been so, so kind. going on, stop. Be still. Listen. Search yourself and turn to God, seeking to listen and to follow God with all your heart and mind and soul and strength. It is the way of truth. As you go into this week, May you go with all the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>